Welcome back on uh, the AM show. We get into our big stories now, our major conversation. Well, majority MPs on the, you know, in Parliament have said that, guess what? The energy arrangements signed by the former administration, the power purchase agreement signed by the erstwhile Mahama administration, are tantamount to causing financial loss to the state. In fact, if you read the Daily Guide this morning, they describe the pay or take PPAs as cruel. So today, we're going to be picking their thoughts, our guests, on our hotline documentary, A Nation That Begs. We'll take it from there and discuss other facets. But guess what? We have only one guest and not guests for now, and here is why. And for a while now, this has been happening, so let's put it out there. We invited the other side, the majority side, the NPP side, and they did not provide us with a guest. I always do this, at least I've started doing that, so that if you're watching, you don't feel, oh, there's no balance on the show. It's just the minority end. We invited. No one was provided. We can't provide. <laughs> for that. And if this side, the NDC side also doesn't provide, it will be the MPP person here alone and we'll have the conversation. So Ghana 4, we'll be getting into the nitty gritty, but let me welcome aboard Roxon Nelson Dafia Makbo, Member of Parliament for South Dine. A very good morning da to you. Makbo. Da Pa Makbo. Oh, but you never, you never told me I that yours was... I do. So it's not, it doesn't take the fe, it takes the fe, yes. Dafia Makbo. I see. Yeah. Why have you waited this long? No, but I think I've done it before. You have? Yes, I think I've done it before. So, but I think I've had yeah. many an occasion to yeah. correct you and say I, I am not Agbeko Bata. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Good no, to but, have you on the show. Yes, Good yes, to join us this yes, morning. Yes, yes. Uh, so, so, so let's start from your constituency, as I always do. How is South Dine? How are you faring on the back of your approval yes, uh, and, and all of that? What, what's, what's new in South Dine? Well, um, I just returned, uh, completed my thank you tour. I had to visit the, the branches one by one from Germany to Agodake to Chanakwe to Klopo to Duga, Ahon, Kaira, Aglanto, Abuichita, Chate, Golovime, Beibome, Todome, Beve, Chukuko, Fegbe, Wawasikam, Ajokwe, Ode, New, and Bate, Udome. Jubati Blango, Chami, a preview for a vetile, Jacke, and Yinsu, Sangachi, to, to show gratitude for re endorsing me for the third unprecedented term. It hasn't happened before. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I didn't break the eight, but I broke the two. <laughs> so um, I just went around to show gratitude to them. Well, you did technically break the eight. No, I broke the two. You broke the two. I don't want to two synchronize terms. with somebody else's All right. uh, um, um, slogan. Slogan. Mm. So uh, the people are happy, but we have work to do. Work to do in terms of delivering on the mandate of the people, um, development projects. You know, we've become a welfare state. Um, everything that people do goes to welfare. So welfare in terms of good But being work. a welfare state technically is not a bad thing. At all, indeed. That that is the, the state that's provides. That, that, that's the aspiration of every nation. That mm. eventually, you get to a stage where everything is done to the benefit of the uh, the people. And so, um, you think of delivery on your mandate. Uh, there are good roads, so they can travel in comfort and in ease, um, do their business. Um, Providing them with portable water, not just water, but portable water, so they can live comfortably. Um, seeking to improving education, health, infrastructure in the area, their microeconomy in the district, developing uh, the markets for them to be able to trade amongst themselves and do small small businesses. So, improving chieftaincy, um, helping the various traditional leaders to be able to also assist you in delivering on some of the development projects. So um, that's where we are. Uh, we, we have work to do. We have work to do. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, there's this quick thing, I just saw it on uh, Joy News on Facebook about rating the Akufuado led government on a scale of 1 to 10, even before we get into the nitty gritty, even before we talk mm -hmm. about the suits, the, the, the matters you've taken to court, yeah. about Agenda 111, yes. about the economy and all of yes. that. I've had a number of members of the ruling administration come to our show. A lot of them are giving this administration 8 out of 10. Yesterday I had Paul Grieve Bwachidankwa come into the studio and he was saying this government was excelling in serving the needs of the people, which is why, to serve that purpose, it would have been good to have the representative here, but the person is absent, so don't blame us. How would you rate this administration? I'll give them three. Three out of ten? Yeah. Three out of ten. Why? Uh, there, is, there, is, there is a high incidence of inequity in terms of delivering development projects. There's, there's a high, high levels of corruption in very high places, in very high public offices. There appears to be nothing done. Um, let me give you an example. We just traveled last week Friday mm -hmm. for purposes of planting trees. We've been doing this for the past I think four years under this guy. Three or so years. Yes. Right. It was reintroduced by them. Professor Mo started it and it's been reintroduced. I, I, I've been asking, for instance, if you go to my constituency, the planting is done haphazardly. We get up, we plant the trees. There's no monitoring. So a speaker actually corrected everyone last week that we don't plant trees, but we plant seedlings, and I agree with, with him. Now, these tree seedlings are planted. Nobody tends to them. Nobody monitors to them. They are, in, they are left in the wild. And so during the dry season, they are consumed by... They become parched. And they are consumed by fire, whenever fire, uh, there's bushfire. Then the year comes around, we go, we're sinking so much millions. So I advised the minister last year when we're debating the, the, the matter. Normally he will come and present a statement and then we debate it and have it adopted. We should be planting what we call wood lots. Wood what? Wood lots. Okay. Lots. So that, for instance, Savdan, we could say that for last year we planted 50 acres of thick mixed with mahogany and sapele. Mm. This year we've added another 50 acres. Then we can pinpoint to the project making progress. So in 10 years, you can have a vast area of land covered in green. It can also be properly protected against bushfires during the dry seasons. You can employ more hands. The Forestry Commission can then employ more hands, especially young, young men and women who are graduating in environmental science and, and, and uh, woodlot science and all that, to tend to some of these woodlots till they attain mat maturity. When that happens, you can also harvest them and replant. But the harvest way that we are doing it, you can't even monitor. And yet we, we continue to sink so much money into it. You've heard, you've heard the issues about 1D, 1F. Mm. Again, there's no, proper, there's no proper monitoring. So companies are giving so much meanings in terms of support. The companies have not been, have not sprung up. Road infrastructure. There appears to be a situation where roads are being done in some particular areas. Yes, I'm, I'm a beneficiary of one such project, but that is, that is like an, a national arterial road, such a major national arterial road running through my constituency. My roads have been abandoned since January 2017. Roads that were under construction, this government came to power. It's been abandoned. I've been, I've been, I've been crying for 
the rules to be. The but I thought you said the last time you came here that I, yes. some of the roads had seen a facelift. No, but that, that's the Eastern Corridor Road. That's what I spoke about. So I don't know how people misunderstood that. I said, yes, I'm happy that the Eastern Corridor Road, which was abandoned, the contractor, a new contractor has been found, has been brought back, and he's working steadily. Bever is totally transformed. And I'm happy for that. But I speak of the feeders. The feeders, they, 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 they are the links to the various communities. They make the community go round within the constituency. The feeders are in a very terrible state. In fact, if you look at Todome to Germany Road, which is 23.1 kilometers, the road has become so bad that now it's even very difficult to reshape it because of some boulders that have appeared on the road because the laterite has been <coughs> eaten away by erosion and constant grading. So now when the graders come, they can't even grade certain portions of the road. And the drivers are not taking it lightly with me at all. So we need to rehabilitate our roads. What are they, they doing? Are they coming after you? Yes. <laughs> but you're not an agent of development. So yes, but are no, you educating no, no, them? Yes, I mean, no, over see, time, are you educating you see, them that, look, it's actually your DCE who is president in this I area think, or your MCE? I think, I think we have, if, it, if this is the constitution, mm -hmm. we have created a constitutional architecture that the essence of which is that it's only the MP and the president that go to the people for election. For votes mm. and and the, the election cycle has become a, a quid pro quo affair it's a give and take so we vote for you you deliver development then we vote for you again so any person whose mandate renewal of which depends on elections ought to be responsible to deliver development Kenya went through the cycle and they saw the wisdom. So in 2010, they did the constitutional review. Now Kenya MPs are given funds to deliver roads, to deliver school projects, to deliver hospitals. As MPs in Ghana, we are so incapacitated. So eventually, sometime down the line, there was an agreement that a, a small percent, five percent of the common fund be given to MPs. There's this, there's, this high, there's this high sense of um, the people regarding this money, but it's so small. If, if you attempt to build a school, a six-unit school project with this money, it takes you several, several years to do that, unless you look for resources from somewhere else. As we speak, the MPs portion, which is the fourth quarter of last year, first quarter of this year, second quarter of this year, that are all due, it's having been paid. You know, second quarter this year is not due, we're still in June. But mm. two quarters, la first, last quarter last year and first quarter this year, that are all due, having been paid. So you want to offer grant scholarships, or financial assistance to your constituents, you're unable to do so, and the letters are piled up. Even though approval has been given, you have given approval that give this person. But the money hasn't up. arrived. The money hasn't come. Mm. And so, how, how does that impact some of the activities you have to do? Because I know very well, mm. uh, someone like, um, uh, let me just get his name, the Member of Parliament for Dr. Dixon Aduma Kukisi. Yes, that's Anyasu. Anyasu Utu. Yeah, my friend. <clears throat> I know he does a lot of that as well. Yes. Helping people in school and all of yes, that, scholarships. Yes, I know for yes, a fact, because yes. I've yes. been... To the education. It's my friend. We serve, we serve yes, on the yes, same yes. committee. That's he does a lot of that. He's doing a fantastic job with that. Education, for example. And it's all from the common fund. Yes. That you, he you does see, this. You see, so how, how problematic is it when the funds meant for that do not come, do not arrive? For instance, the assemblies have been paid their share of the common fund. The MPs haven't been paid. Is it not interesting? The assemblies have received the fourth quarter of last year. But the portion for the MPs haven't been released. Do you know why? I, I don't know. I'm struggling to appreciate it. Have you found out? Have you asked I have, questions? I, you see, the, the releases come concurrently. That for the assembly and that for the MPs. Normally it comes concurrently. But for some strange reasons, the portion for the assemblies to deliver on their projects have been paid. I think the 
the fourth quarter for last year has been paid. And the first That's quarter, for the assemblies? Yes. And the first quarter for this year too has been paid. So the assemblies are not owed to common fund, but the NPs are owed. So we are incapacitated in terms of delivering on that. And, and you see, tertiary school fees have become so, so expensive. So as NPs, a lot of us, including, I, I think I'm one of, arguably, the MP that gives the highest amount of scholarships in, 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 among MPs in this country. So far, I've spent nearly 500,000 on within, within your two terms? Yes. 500,000? Yes. Within your two the terms? The calculation is... On just education? On just, no, on just assisting persons pay part of their school fees. Reducing wow. the burden. 2,000, 2,005, 3,000. All of them, to, them from the common fund? All of them from the common fund. And it's, and it's such a big thing in Southdine. And so you, get, you are admitted to, say, Picky Training College. Your school fees is about 3,500 or 4,000 per annum. That your, your parents are unable to assist you. So you come to MP, okay, I can assist halfway. So I approve that 2,000 be given. It's the persons have been waiting for some time now. And now the schools are also sucking, strangely. Tertiary schools don't suck. When we, were in, when we were in the university, you were not sacked. Your results may be withheld if you owe some school fees. Your certificates could be withheld if you owe some school fees. But to ask the person to go home? Hmm. But now it's happening. They are treating them like secondary schools. It's so which tertiary institutions are you speaking of? I just got a call this morning that somebody says his child his ward, who is a student in Pekit Training College, has been asked to go home because she owes school fees. All right. And so he, he called me this morning, you know, virtually in tears. So I, I assured him that I have a show this morning. If I'm done, I'll re-engage him and we'll see what to do by tomorrow. So I want to plead with the tertiary institutions that... There are so many ways that you can get the people to pay the fees. When we, we encounter them at um, public accounts committee, they also try to explain that people aren't in earnest these days. So you give them the opportunity to go through the training with the hope that they'll come back and pay up. They never show up. They never do. They never do. So they are also constrained. So, so it's, a, it's a hen and a, 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 a egg and an egg situation. situation. Mm -hmm. Now... Again, you, you look at maintenance of these students. It's also increasingly becoming high to maintain tertiary students because of cost of living has gone up. And I've been, I've been hoping that the student loan regime could be structured in such a way that it could assist the students in that regard. I hear there are a lot of problems in that area as well. Mm. So you apply for the loan, it takes forever for it to be processed. Otherwise, I went to, I went, I attended university. I, I benefited from the student loan. When I began working, I paid back, you know. So uh, we need to improve some of these re regimes to assist, because education is everything. You, if you build a school block, it benefits one community in the constituency. But with the, with, but with the financial assistance, you can touch the lives of about 25, 30 tertiary students who are scattered across the constituency. Yeah. And these persons will come back with their training from the tertiary level to be able to improve and impact positively on the lives of the younger ones. So myself and Adumako, uh, Dr. Adumako Kisi. Kisi. Yes, uh, At least I, I mentioned his name because I know his yeah, very, fact. Uh, yes. Some of them may say it here, but I had got mm. to see. I can send you details of uh, what I've done so far in terms of how much I've given out as scholarship. Mm. Very fantastic. Very fantastic. I see. So uh, the, the, the common fund. So how many, how, many, how many quarters have not come for you? Two? So far, two. Two quarters. Two. L l the last quarter of last year and the first quarter of this, of year, this which, year, which have all fallen due. How much do you get per, per quarter? It depends on... I know it's not fixed. Yes. How much it, do you it get? It depends on... Um, the total revenue. 
Right. You know, there was even litigation regarding that. So averagely, that, averagely, averagely, about seventy-five thousand, eighty thousand. Seventy-five to eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. A mm -hmm. quarter. Mm -hmm. And that's what you must use to build, <laughs> to do everything. You know. Interesting. So let's 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 make tracks. Let's move on to other matters. The economy. Yes. Paramount. We've we've put out our latest hotline documentary, A Nation That Begs. Have you seen it? No, I have I right. haven't. Uh, so Isaac Kofia J, a uh, research and data analyst here, put that together, looking at the trend of our economic life and how we've been begging, 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 cup in hand. You know the interesting dynamic? We're now the topmost producer of gold yes. on the continent. Yes. I read that. And beyond. Week. You know, we were, for a number of years, we were, we were behind South Africa. No, no we, we were, were behind South, South Africa. Africa. Then we came on top for yeah. about two, three years. Then we lost it, I think, in 2021, thereabouts. And now we're back as the foremost entity on top. We are the second largest producer of cocoa, cocoa across the globally. world. <clears throat> we have lithium now. And today I read the land minister saying green minerals won't be exported raw. This is all a lot of talk that <laughs> your party has done before and they are doing too. You remember in the 28, 2010, thereabouts, 2012, 2014, we said similar things. I wonder sometimes what happens. Just about a year or two ago, we're the topmost producer of yam, exporter of yam. Many people don't know that. We have three oil wells running, functional. Yeah. We have manganese, bauxite, these to, for your steel industry and industrialization. We have diamonds, we have timber, we have, well, galamse now, but we have timber. I mean, uh, how can we even explain where we are having to go back to the IMF and beg for how much? Three billion dollars. Yeah. Which we could have easily easily secured yeah. if we had been more prudent, yeah. efficient, effective, even with one thing, just one thing. Forget all the other loopholes, corruption. And less wicked. Um, thank you very much. We, I, I'll start from the angle of wickedness. We've been, been wicked to ourselves in the sense that you spoke about the fact that we said we we're going to process uh, green minerals before they are exported. I was in this country when a Ghanaian businessman lawfully got um, a concession from government or from the state to exploit the minerals in uh, Ninehini. Mm -hmm. The company is called Western Quebec. As soon as government changed hands, Eastern Quebec was challenged for supposedly not acquiring the concession lawfully and tragically got a court to um, declare that grant unlawful. So when you say tragically got a court, you want, I'm sure you mean to say the it, court system no, delivered no, a verdict No, I said tragically. That. Because you see, when a Ghanaian company mm -hmm. is capable of improving the lot of fellow Ghanaians in terms of offering job opportunities, you regularize. You don't terminate and ask him to go home. You regularize the transaction and give the person the opportunity to do the business for which it was set up to do, lawfully. But if you've, if you've already engaged in some illicit activity, what is, the, what state, is it? the state on. has the no, options. No, no. What is the no I'm, just, I'm just promising it on what you're saying. No, but it, it, that was not the case. It was the acquisition of the, of the concession that was challenged. It, it was as simple as that. Mm. And it was revoked. So, and yet it's been awarded to another. And nothing is happening. That's one. 
Two. If you check the state of the whole airport, it has been abandoned, not put to use. Money sunk into a project that's supposed to generate revenue. People would have been employed in whole for them to work. Flights would have been flying in from other West African neighboring countries. The economy of whole would have improved and, 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 and by parity of reasoning, the economy of the country would have improved. Indeed, the analysis have been made that when flies fly into Accra, Kotoka, they, they refuel before they take off. Ideas have come up that the whole airport could have been turned into a, 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 a flight training center in addition to a refueling center. So the flights come, they fly to Ho, they refuel, they come back, then they go. So flights from up north. Yes. You can stop there, refuel. Exactly. Continue to this is how you further think, south. This is how you think strategically. Mm. But somebody says that the whole airport is not. Uh, who says? Well, I have heard. That who said? Why is the whole airport not put for the purpose for which it was built? Such a commercial venture. Mm. And yet, the same government is thinking of building an airport at Cape Coast, which is nearly equidistant from Accra to Ho and Ho to Cape Coast. It's equidistant, about the same kilometers away from the capital. There's a model that's not working. And yet we want to replicate the same model that tomorrow another person to say it won't work. Which model is that? Allowing, allowing the regional airports to, to function properly, bring revenue, then you can build more. Mm. We, are, we are talking about the economy. Abandoning projects. Look at Seglemi. 1,400 accommodation units. Whatever crime has been committed, can't we put these people in accommodation? Whilst the state deals with the offenders, supposedly. Paul Gray, Bachidanko, government spokesperson on governance and security. Yesterday, he was here on the show. Yeah. I brought up Saglemi as one of you know, those crucial areas we are getting it wrong. And he said, for example, why, why put a housing facility in Saglemi? Look at how far away it is from uh, the center. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm just telling you what, what he said. I'll not share my response, but why put it so far away when the thrust of workers are here in the city center and people are struggling to get places in Tesano, Jogula, Belengbe, and others? If you wanted to serve the public, get it somewhere close. Okay. That's what he said. Okay, thank you very much. Paul Graves is a friend, but... From, from the comment he made about Seglema and his location, it appears that he has very little knowledge in urban geography and urbanization. To plan, look, my brother, when you are in the air, a crowd needs planning. Mm. In terms of spatial planning and residential, how it is that, clear when you look at Accra and you look at Tema, you see the difference because exactly. Tema was planned. But Accra has consumed Tema. Yeah. It's been consumed. So uh, uh, when you're in there, you, 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 you see it, but Accra has overwhelmed them uh, and gone beyond. Everywhere now within the Accra conurbation is called Accra. You have suburbs. Paul Griff says what? Seglema is far from Accra. People travel from Adan every day to come to work in Accra. People travel from the eastern region, people, the western region. So allow me to make advance those arguments. People travel from Winneba to come to work every day in Accra. People actually live in Accra and travel to Winneba every day to, to go to work. I know, I know a lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba. He resides in Accra. He lives at um, uh, Abekala Pass. He travels to go and lecture and come back every day. Paul Griff thinks that the people who occupy Segleme are ordinary residents in Accra, Kwa Accra. No. Put the facility out and let people come pay, pay rent and occupy it. 
We were told by the defense minister that there's some arrangement for the military to go occupied. It's been two years. I mean, Seglem is rotting away. And people are sleeping in the streets of Accra. And we say the economy is no good. Now, let me give you another example. Look at the e blocks, the number of e blocks. And I've sued you in respect of the e blocks. Mm. Look at the number of e blocks completed 80%, 90%, some even 100% that have been abandoned and are sitting in the wild. State resources pumped into projects like that is not being put to the use for which they were put up because of wickedness. I don't know about wickedness, but you would think that, especially for an administration that has brought to bear free mm. SHS, yes. and with capacity constraints, they would tap into that it, it and use them. It dovetails. I mean, I'm just being. Yes, it, so your point dovetails into my, my, my argument that. If you're not wicked, you won't do that. Forget about the NDC government. But think of the people. Think of the people. The people for which these projects were intended. Let the people put the project to use. And let's deal with whatever issues we think we have. So, they, when we speak of the economy, our attitude towards managing state property in itself is a problem. It's a problem. Projects that are supposed to generate revenue. Look, I travel nearly every week on a shaman Akusomo who road, because that's to my constituency. In 2019, we procured 259 million euros to construct that road up to the Adomi Bridge. Mm. In October or sometime November 2020, the heat of the electionary campaign, the president went to cut salt on that road. It is June 2023. Come and see the traffic on that road. Money procured. And yet, meanwhile, the tenor on the grant components would have run out and will begin to pay the interest component on the facility. Road has not been delivered. How does all of this fit into the state of the economy? If the IMF, the IMF money has come, the first tranche of it, six hundred million dollars. We're yes. expecting another, what about three hundred million by the by the close of year, uh, but. In terms of stabilizing our currency, that has not really happened. In terms of inflation, we see it unnervingly taking another spike. Mm. What do you see when you look at the economy? What, what, what is the reality that you see from where you see I, I, I was going to add one or two points, then I will, will, will do that. Look at the NI. NIA, I, I, I put out an information. NI between 2018 and now, had received in excess of one billion Ghana cities to do its lawful duty of simply registering Ghanaians and let everyone of age and who is qualified get his national ID card. Now NI is charging 280 Ghana cities to offer a service that it has been giving public funds to undertake. And nobody appears to be speaking. How do we allow a state institution to do this to our, our own people? Suddenly, NIS says they, they won't do the normal service, but they are opening offices and they are, they are labeling it premium offices. And they are offering premium services. But aren't we Cash. the same people who said that we, we needed more centers? We needed them to be more accessible. If you need the more center, open the more center and offer the normal service. Don't put an economic bar. But you do know that prevent. setting up these offices comes with some 
logistics. So come back to so, so come back to that. Parliament. So there must be a way so, of recouping. So, so come back to Parliament. No, so come back to Parliament. Tell Parliament that you want to build additional offices. So you need more resources. And defend it. They are not opening these offices even in the districts. So in my constituency, somebody should travel from Ajebi to Ho. It, it cost him about, about in, in and out, it cost him about 70 cities to do that. Then he gets to Ho, he pays 280 cities. So if you add all and then that, when, 350. Yes, and when you spell his name wrongly, because a lot of the staff do that, then you ask him to pay 110 cities to correct the clerical errors. So for someone who this, goes through that, the person would have paid 460 Nearly. And he must feed. In all that, the person must feed. And you know the people they call is the MPs. That is why I'm so livid and I'm so angry that Professor Stefa is capable of registering the people normally. I've, I've pleaded with him to even go around and register the people. He will do it. He says some law. I've checked the law. The law doesn't prevent him from going around the various districts and registering the people, delivering on his mandate. He prefers to sit in situ in some office. Even that, he won't do it properly. So why must this be happening? Why should we tolerate this? Let's, I, I, I feel your, your pain because in the end, all of this comes back to you. Yes. Back. When the people, passed back when, to you. When the people, people call, call you, right. first we must look for that money, mm. look for a vehicle, and transport them at your own cost. But I think moving, moving on, for your own blood pressure safety yeah. and for your own heart health yeah. and for your own you know, mm. peace of mind, yeah. I think we really, I don't know when it will come to the point where even as we've been cogitating... Uh, tweaking our con constitution. Mm. Recently, I've heard some people talk about a new constitution because there are some groups, mm. I don't want to mention their names. I met one of them uh, recently talking about a new constitution. I've always spoken about some amendments mm. to the constitution, retweaking it. And what else would have been the need for the enterprise in 2010, the Constitutional Review Commission and the work it did? Mm. But I think it is high time we, we spelt out some of these things clearly because I feel it is untenable yeah. the way we go about the pressures we put on legislators yeah. and all of that. Yeah. I don't want to say this, but I'm sure some of you eventually get some health issues because of the sort yes. of a lot, a lot pressure. Of, a lot of our colleagues. That, I look, I mean, when I was getting to parliament, when I was in practice, I had a small gray hair, yeah, just one. And every morning when I stand in front of the mirror before I go to court, I, I play with it. Now I'm gray all over. <laughs> you understand? Anyway. Because, because we don't sleep. Mm -hmm. the, the, the information keep coming, even at dead of night, people are calling you. And if you don't respond, uh, you, you don't are interact with the people, yes, yes, you are next incapable. thing you know, they'll be booting you yeah, up. That's, that's what I'm saying, you are incapable of right. serving them. I, I have this comment coming through, though. Uh, Klochu Homaka Boateng says, to be honest with you, traveling from Saglimi to work in Temo Accra is difficult. Just imagine that boom, uh, barrier traffic. But I've, I've used that road before. I used to work in from from uh you know past that it's, sports no, it's, it's the traffic sports center it's there is traffic the, you know there is if traffic, the road is but bad. with with the road if, the construction no, the road is under done. construction at least up to the winner up to i think central investors who yes when it's done travel time will be so short it, 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 it may appear far but in terms of time it will be short Let's, 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 let's focus now on yeah. the other economic dynamics that yeah. I spelled out. Yes. Inflation, IMF money, yes. the currency exchange, mm. the state of the economy. Yeah. Quick thoughts on that. I want us to make tracks and now, get into other matters. Now, inflation is about 44%. Is it? 44. I the latest maybe. increment... Uh, I think it's 44. I would have to check on the latest... It was 50. It was 50. It's 42 point something. 42, okay. Because it, it slipped to, I think, around 41 point something. And yes, from, it's, it's from a high of 54. Yes. From a high of 54. It hit over And so, so we have improved. Is, is, is the level that has decreased slightly. But we have not improved. If we have an economy where the inflation rate is hovering f over 40%, it means we're in crisis. 
living conditions are so high. You buy something today, tomorrow, it's gone up. Cement was 15 cities, 20 cities, 25 cities, 30 cities. There was a time when I, I, I got cement for around 17 cities. At yes. some point, it was 20-something yes. cities. Now, cement is over 100 cities. And last, even, last I checked, it was about 100 cities. And even depending on your distance from the production center, you buy cement 110 or 120 in this country. And, and the inflation rate will save you. Because if you don't buy... And cement is not something you can buy even store. When you buy, you must use it in record time. Otherwise, it goes bad. So if you are not ready, it means the time you are ready, your resources to even buy cement to do something for yourself is, is gone haywire. But let's, let's face it. And uh, the NDC administration, when you were also in Parliament, yes. there were some very no, difficult I in times. I was in Parliament under the NDC. You were not? No, I was a private practitioner. I was, I was, I was a lawyer. Are you saying under the John Dramani Mahama administration, you were not yet a member of Parliament? No. Oh, so this is your, this is your, this clearly is your second, second term. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. I now get it. How, how did I always sense. assume that you had been in Parliament? It's, it's just if you, are, but, if you put the industry, you understand things. Well, if you work hard. You have a point there, though. Yes. But under the erstwhile administration, which is your party, by the mm. way, there were some very dark times in terms of the same currency exchange, in terms of some inflation, maybe not as bad as what we are facing now, yeah. in terms of the economic dynamics, mm. the cost of living, yeah. uh, fuel prices, yes. all of that. You faced that, too. We did. But... Here's, so can you, here's the you, you have any right no, no, here's as, the, as a cattle we have, that is very we have a right. black we are, no, to call the we are not. We are not black. very black. We are not very black Both at of all. you are black. No, we are not black at all. They are black. We are not black. And let, let me tell you why. Under the NDC, you could even be approached by banks. You see them. They, have, they call them marketing officers. They'll come here and give you a loan. They can process the loan here for, for you without stepping a foot out to do what you, whatever you want to do with it, a repay back. Cost of loan in, under this regime is atrocious. Because all those businesses, all those microfinance companies that were playing those key role, bridging that gap, they've been, they've been collapsed. Over 445 companies. Today isn't government borrowing money to set up what they call a development bank. They are. Do you, have to, do, you, do you have to collapse a bank to set up a bank? It's a pity. So one of the key problems we had in this economy began from that policy. Over 10,000 workers were sent home. And that will have a toll on the economy. By all means, punish companies. But don't do it in a manner that will be inimical to the, to, the, to the greater welfare of the people in the economy. Corruption. Look at the Auditor General's report, which we keep interrogating. The incidence of siphoning public money into, into private ventures and pockets, it's very high. Interest, and I know you know what that is, to be given fiscal cash to go and deliver on a public service. And for, for you to return and account for it, public officials won't do it. They keep the money. In the, so the leakage, this, so as a nation, we are, we are hemorrhaging. Now, if, if we speak in respect of the energy matters. And I was about to go there anyway. Yes. So if you want the to, energy matters. If, if you want to go there, then let me just... Somebody claims that the agreements that we signed will amount to what? Causing financial loss. Let me punctuate that for you so you can address yeah. all of them. So we have some of uh, that, for example, who's yeah. been speaking to some of these matters. Yeah. They have described... And he's the, the chairman of the Energy the, Commission. The Energy power Commission. purchase agreements yeah. you signed mm. as cruel. Mm. Uh, just to quote uh, the chairman of the committee, Atachia, 
when he addressed Parliament yesterday, he said, when a government does not project into the future to see the dwindling fortunes of our energy, we will baptize into a crisis. And that is what we found ourselves in the Mahama era. We couldn't see that we were going to have a situation like that. Were we sleeping on the job? This got the government into an ambulance situation. That is an emergency. And this is when those who say they are coming to help us decided to foist on us some levels of contracts that we are suffering the consequences of today. He said. He concluded. Of course, yeah. Now, let me respond to my senior Tatiana. That what is more cruel is for his government to vary the Ameri tenor from five years to 15 years. When by now, Ameri under the initial five year tenor agreement would have become our property. But that was also on the back of cost constraints and how to deal demonstrated with, by, with, with, with the economic no, arrangement that Demonstrated had. by whom? Because the Ameri repayment regime was regularly followed. There was no need for this government to, re to have renegotiated that. But they did. And in the process, burdening us more. And it speaks of cruelty. It's the people who are more cruel. So you're admitting that you were cruel, but I, they are I, crueler. No, what you're saying. I, I, I'm not admitting. I'm saying that the people who are rather cruel to us are the people who speak of cruelty. Hmm. John Mahama solved a crisis. You may not like his format, but he solved the crisis. In any case, didn't this government come to parliament to say that they are renegotiating some of those PPAs? What, 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 what has happened to those renegotiations? The government has nothing to hang on. So every, every day, they regurgitate these PPA matters. You are aware that it's been exposed that monies they claim that they paid in respect of these PPAs were actually not PPA payments. What were they? They were actually payments in respect of VRA losses and ECG losses. So they paid directly to whom? The ECG and the VRA? Yes. Instead of the, P, uh, the, the IPPs? Exactly. Because you see, the, VR, uh, the VRA and the, and the ECG are off taker from, this, from these generating firms. So, Atachia and his government, he may no longer be in government though, but he's a member of the party forming the government. They have nothing to hang on. This is a government that has sunk so low in many, many, many sectors of the economy. So what they do is to rehash old points, regurgitate old points, to score cheap political points. But the people can see too. The people can see through. You are signing new agreements. Is that not correct? They are signing new PPAs. I read two weeks ago that they have signed a new PPA. The reality is that if you speak to the energy people, they'll tell you that we need more IPPs on board, else we're going to fall back into doom. So, so, so where is this issue of cruel PPA agreements? Mm. It's, it's just high falutin sounding English expression. But they have a leg to stand on, especially when you have the World Bank's country director, I think, Pierre I th Frank I think, Laporte, I think, I, corroborating I think, what they're saying. I, I think I blame my party. You blame the NDC? For not, I blame my party leadership mm. for not taking on this, this politician in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tie of a World Bank country director. You're referring to Pierre Laporte? Of course. He has no business speaking in the manner that he did. Why do you refer, if, refer if to him I as a were, politician? If he's, I were... He's, he's if really, I, you know, they, they if I were, data if I were, we If them. I were in, in a certain authoritative position within the party, we would send him a stinker. Ah, we were in this country. But your party has responded to this. I don't know whether no, you did not No, I, I no but have, because but there, have been, have, there have been people, even Dr. Kwabnodonko, the former power air. That is not those power are, minister. Those are, no, those but the are, point is, the yeah, point is, yeah. you have responded. You have said that he was completely misled. With which, I, let, let me just yeah. tell you the points that have been made. That he was misled by the points he made. Because first off, to get a deal like that, and I've spoken to energy experts, they corroborate that. To get a deal like that, 
It's like going to the bank for a loan when you are hard up. You will not get certain concessions. You need it in an emergency situation. Most countries in such a situation going for such a package would have constraints. So that has been established. In fact, he was dared to provide other countries around the same time who had any such energy compacts, who had got much better deals than what we were given. Again, the talk was about the fact that the minority then in parliament had approved all of these, all of these through parliament. So those are the arguments that your party has made forcefully. Uh, I don't know about you see, not making you any see, arguments. That, 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 that is not the kind of response I desire. And some have addressed him personally. Though. Yes, I, I thought that as a party would have addressed him in a political tone. Because clearly he's, he's, he, he, has, he, has, he has descended into the arena of conflict. I, are you suggesting the World Bank country director is now a member of the MPP or something? I am not saying is so. He, is he speaking it's, for the MPP? It is his words and conduct that suggest so. So you're, you are suggesting that he is acting like a member I am of the not MPP? Saying so. I'm saying that his conduct and words clearly suggest that. You understand? Mm. So when you are a diplomat, because World Bank country directors, they have diplomatic status, you don't do that. You can make a professional point, but you don't speak in a politically tainted, slanted manner. Has he, has he asked the government what is the outcome of the renegotiations of these PPEs? He should respond to that. My very revered senior, uh, Chachu Chikata, granted an interview and I think spoke about this, if you recall, on TV3. Mm -hmm. And like you are saying, Comrade Donk also spoke. But I'm saying that as a party, we needed to react to what... Look, these people, they have an interest. Take it or leave it. Mm. They have an interest in where political party lies in this country. And that so, interest, you feel, determines how they're posturing? Of course. If they feel comfortable under this government, they will speak in a manner that will favor them politically. So, in a nutshell, you disagree vehemently with the, minor, the majority's take that you were not reckless. That we, you, we were not reckless. In fact, that you we were, not were cruel. reckless. We were not that reckless. You were, cruel. We were not cruel. Mm. We were not reckless. We were not cruel. So. They have, no, they have no point. They, they cannot score a political point on this matter. Let me ask you, where you find yourself? Because uh, the, the energy minister has been given assurances that, uh, let me just get the newspaper, the lights will continue to stay on. Where you are, do you have light constantly? Are you experiencing the same power outages that the rest of us are yes, having I, to contend with? I do. I do. Mm. How often? Sometimes it goes off. Um, I'm often not at home, but, but I have information. It goes off between two, comes around six, seven in the evening, or it goes off early in the morning, around eight o'clock, comes back around three, four. So you're experiencing those as well. Yes. Let's quickly move away from those. We, we've touched on what's going on in your constituency. We've touched on a number of matters already, but I want us to look at the, um, the constitutional aspects of our, constitution, um, our conversation very quickly. One being... The EC and the talk about the fact that you're constantly, your party is bastardizing them, bringing up accusations, allegations that hold no water. We heard recently from Dr. Sribo Kweku. Then there is the case you are pursuing in court, also tied to the Electoral Commission, when it comes to two people who have now been brought to bear, Doc and Dr. Apiahene, I should say, and Hajia Salima. What's the latest on that? I haven't gone against Hajia Salima. You haven't? I haven't. Because I, I dug for the evidence, I couldn't get any. Oh, I see. Yes. As in political exactly. party relations. Connectedness. Connected to yes. Hajia. Yes. The political connectedness of Hajia to the MPP. Right. I couldn't get any. You couldn't find that? I couldn't find that. Regardless there's of been, the family there, there, ties. There's been talk. Mm. There's been talk. But family ties is not 
It's not enough. As grave as political ties. Mm. And that is what the, the, the spirit and letter of the Constitution forms on. Because you see, the business, the constitutional business of the Electoral Commission is not one of determining family matters. Mm. But it's one of determining where political party will lie at any level. So when you have somebody who is politically connected, exposed to one party vis-a-vis -vis the other, then his being in there can strongly be suggested that he will act in a manner that will favor the political party that is connected to. And that is a point you made against Dr. Apiahini. Exactly. You state that even if your party, the NDC, were to win in 2024, yes. with his mere presence yes. there, yes. he would do everything to frustrate exactly. that end. Yes. But, 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 but this is a commission that is independent, that works see, with a number. And he's not, even, oh, hold on. he's not even the chairperson. They are all commissioners, it's, it's but he's not the chairperson. It's a commissioner. He has rules. We don't we have we have deputy commissioners for operations, deputy commissioners for FNA. We have such designations. We have director of elections who report to the commission or the commissioners in one capacity or the other. And so when we say that in the performance of its functions, the electoral commission is supposed to be independent, that independence is again hinged on the personnel who man its operations. You, you, you appreciate my point. Mm. So, uh, a commissioner in charge of elections can say that, go and, and open more registration centers in um, Drabin North. Because within the meaning of the CI, the Electoral Commission can designate registration centers or voting centers, depending on the circumstances. Mm. Even though the voting centers or registration centers are supposed to be gazetted. Haven't you had situations where on election days, some voting centers won't receive voting materials until after 1 p.m.? Mm. You haven't? You haven't? Well, there's been, talk, there's been talk that that will be no, dealt no, with. No, so that, 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 is why, that is why the Electoral no, Commission is even proposing no. that now voting will end much earlier. At around, How are they going to uh, do it? Well. They, they don't, they, you see, they, 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 they are not. They, they've even spoken about if the need be, they will cut if, down sizes of polling you know, stations and all of that, spread them out further so that there are fewer people. So we can execute see, that. This is a man who is in charge, this, this is the mindset of the man who is in charge, if they need be. So he's going to exercise his discretion within the law. And if he's politically tainted, politically exposed, he will do things to favor his political party. And, and remember that elections are held, public elections, that are supposed to be constitutionally supervised by the Electoral Commission are held mainly for political parties who are primarily established to contest elections or participate in elections, okay. plus individuals. Mm. There are only two participants in public elections, registered political parties and individual Ghanaians who are eligible to participate. So it, 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 it is clear. We have to go now. Yes. Uh, it is clear we're wrapping on this end of the, the Electoral Commission. But I just want you maybe in less than a minute to address this for me. So the NDC, from where you sit, because some of the questions you've been asking in recent times, are you going to go back to the PIAC and will you stop bastardizing the EC? You see, this issue about bastardizing the EC. You take them on for every no, little no, no. It's not every reason little. that comes up. You don't leave That's the what they're saying. No, you don't leave the EC... Have you heard Dr. Sribo speak? Google, Sribo spoke and damned the NDC. Dr. Bosman Asari spoke and referred to the NDC as the most dangerous political party in this country. We, in fact, we are a danger to our democracy. You think that an electoral, an unbiased electoral commissioner will speak in such terms? Will you go back to have you Have you listened to Sri Boy in respect of the new draft CI they intend to bring to Parliament? I have. When Parliament takes a decision, he says that as for them, 
as for what parliament does, they are not concerned. As for them, the, where they stand is where they stand. You speak in such disconcerting terms, in a condescending tone to parliament. When he granted your interview, I was in the village, I heard him briefly. He says that they are in touch with leadership to, 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 to bring the CI in the, in the original format. So all that we've done in parliament, all that we said, the resolution we passed. Did you find that disrespectful? It, 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 it's, it's not only disrespect, but a disregard for the decisions of institutions and organs of state in this country. All right, so the point is clear. Will you join... Pa uh, you know so let me, let me say this that the NDC is, is, does not engage in the business of bastardizing the East. Indeed, go and check which party has gone against the EC within the past 30 years. Go and check. Mm. Even in court, go and check. MPP versus EC. Go and check the number of cases that have been reported. Will you join, rejoin the party grouping you know, interactivity with the EC? Yes. We, that was we, my other yes, question. Yes, we, we've made it clear. not addressed it. We've yet. made it clear. But you see, again... You gauge the people with their, you gauge the conduct of the people by what they say. Here is the case: the electoral commissioner says that the the um, uh, what, what is it? Piac? No, it's not. IPAC. IPAC. The decisions of IPAC are not binding on them. It's merely advisory. So why waste your time on? On, uh, in engaging in a body whose Okay, so that means you're basically binding. not interested in No, no, I am not saying so, but I'm saying that the person whom you want to engage and, and so that you can do this in, in, a much, in a collectively mutual manner says that your decisions are not binding on her or on the commission. All right. We'll have to sew it up here. Some other time we'll get to the opportunity of delving into other matters. Yes like the National Cathedral, Agenda 111. And, and that's enough. But uh, <laughs> Member of Parliament for South Dying, Roxanne Nelson, Dafia Mekbo, uh, joining us in the studio this morning for this conversation. And uh, we're grateful, sir, that you took it's the time. It's my pleasure to, to have you. Yeah. And good morning to my people in South Dying. Pekik Bali Pueve Tongo. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So that's how we cap it up. But there's still a lot coming your way on the AM show. We're going to be delving into some other dynamics on the back of our engagements with the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. We're going to be looking at food safety issues among others. Do stay with us. We'll be right back on the AM Show.